Now I want to talk about folder and file structure and naming conventions because this will be important as you sort of go into this and, and making sure you have well-organized uh, code and well-organized structure and makes easy little things a little bit easier to manage. And there are some sort of gotchas and pitfalls you got to watch out for when it comes to naming your files and so forth. So first I want to talk about structure. I'll walk you through a, a typical probably pretty common setup when it comes to your folder and file structure. And then we'll get into some of the naming conventions. So one of the things that you'll often heard referred to is something called the root folder. Now I'm going to go ahead and name this root like this, but when someone refers to a root folder, they're not actually referring to a folder called root like this. Instead, what they're referring to is let's say this was our our project or this was our website. And inside of this, we would then, let's go ahead and open up this and we'll create a new folder. And we might call this say images. Okay, so we have a structure here where we have a folder inside of another folder. Well, the folder that is all the way sort of at the bottom, it is the main one that every all the other files and folders are contained inside of, is considered the root folder. And oftentimes when you upload this to your site, this will actually be, say, your where your sort of root domain uh, is. So if we rename this to, say, google.com or something like this, you know what what people what is immediately loaded into that that main section there is going to be sort of the root folder and then you have all of your subfolders inside of that okay so we'll just call this my first web page like this and inside of that then we can start talking so that's our root folder now we can start talking about the folders that we're going to have inside of that and oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see one for images you'll see a another one for your css files and you'll see another one for your javascript files like this this is a pretty common setup when it comes to a web page so you have your images you have your CSS in, in one other folder and you have your JavaScript in another. And then you would have some sort of new uh, document like this. And let's just call this index.html. Okay, uh, this would be a pretty common setup for a website. Now, index.html is sort of a special file. And the reason it is is because whenever... Uh, you have you could have multiple files inside of here. Let's say let's go ahead and create another one and we'll call this about.html, right? And these would represent all of your different web pages. Well, if you just go to say my first web page, what is the you know, you go to google.com, you don't necessarily specify you want to go to google.com slash index.html. You just say google.com. So what the web browser does is it assumes if, if no file is spe specified, if no path is specified, it's going to just default to trying to display index.html. So index.html is sort of the, the default file that we will be loaded for a folder. And that's true even of these subfolders like this. We may cr come in here and we may create a, a file called or excuse me, go ahead and uh, ignore that. We'll go ahead and create a file called uh, style.css, right? We may create a file like this, but that's not going to get loaded by default if someone tries to go to my first web page slash CSS. And so if we were to come in here and we were to create a new document called index.html like this, that would still be the default file, even though it's our C CSS folder. And if someone tries to browse this folder, they will get this index.html file. Now that is actually a best practice when we talk about building out our file and folder structure, because if you don't have this index.html file, oftentimes what will happen is the server will return and display a list of all of the files inside of the folder that is clickable. Well, if you don't want someone a potential hacker seeing how all of your files are stored on your server, then you, you wouldn't want them to be able to see that list. So 
adding this index.html file and just leaving it blank is sort of a best practice for security when it comes to websites, okay? So again, this is a pretty standard, I would say, folder structure. You have your images, you have your CSS, you have your JavaScript, and then your individual pages, your home page, which would be index.html, your about page, your contact.html, and so forth, uh, would all be sort of right here in your root folder so that when someone goes to your website, they just have to go to yourwebsite.com slash about.html, not slash you know, the name of a folder, the name of another folder, then slash about HTML. That would be sort of difficult to get to. Now, another thing that you'll notice that I've sort of been doing as I've done this is you'll notice that I'm using all lowercase and I'm using no spaces. Uh, uppercase, it sort of depends on the browser and so forth and, and, and the setup. But if you use uppercase, they're mostly case sensitive. URLs are mostly case sensitive. So if you had, for example, if we renamed this to a capital about.html like this, and someone typed in a lowercase, they would get uh, an error that they that that page couldn't be found. So it's best practice to, and of course, having to remember that this is uppercase and all that sort of thing is just extra that your site visitors are going to have to do. So the standard is to keep everything lowercase and also things like if we were to, let's go ahead and do a new, new document here. If we were to do something like contact and then do a space, if I could spell here, contact space like this. Uh, and yeah, it's even have one, having trouble saving it here. But contact space dot HTML like this, um, that can, that's, opens up, there's a potential for problems with this. So the way that you handle this, you don't want to do that. That is sort of a big no-no. So the way that you handle this is either you put it all together like this, or you can use underscores like this, or you can use dashes like this. But we don't want to have uh, any spaces in our both our file names or our folder names. Your best bet is to keep these things as simple as possible because again, you have people, oftentimes it'd probably be people who maybe aren't as tech savvy who are trying to visit your website. And so the, the, the less they have to remember to up capitalize or put a dash or this, that, the other, the easier it is for them to get, to be able to find stuff and easier it is going to be you for you to remember. And most of the other sites that they're going to visit are going to be structured and have their names work this way uh, as well. So they're going to be used to it. So again, all lowercase, no spaces, generally want to avoid special characters except for underscores uh, and dashes and things like that. So that is file and folder sort of structure and naming conventions and so forth.